What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. It's a Monday. That can mean only one thing on the channel. We will of course be checking out the world rankings to see the shifts up that have happened due to the games that happened on the weekend for the Autumn Internationals. There were some quite surprising results. A lot to go through there and then afterwards of course we'll be checking out the community polls, seeing what you guys thought was your favourite game and then finally taking a look at the Super Brew results where for the second we got a bounce I think I've done pretty terribly. So it's going to be fun to have a look through them. So starting out with the world rankings then so no movers here in the top five quite surprising so uh, of course ireland beating australia not really moving by a lot of points there france securing that win over japan sees them still retain over that 90 marker new zealand and england of course had a draw so not a lot going on there in terms of points south africa beating italy uh, with, with quite a substantial marker, to be fair. Has seen them gain points, but not enough to overtake New Zealand there, so they'll retain four. So top five all stay exactly the same. Now, <laughs> the second set of five, where we really get to see some people moving around. Scotland beating Argentina on the weekend. Uh, sees them shifts up. So Scotland actually go from ninth uh, all the way up to sixth. Argentina go from sixth down to seventh. So that's the swap around there. Now, one of the big talking points from the weekend, Wales. Losing that game to Georgia. Um, I didn't do any coverage on the channel. I don't have as much time as I would like to on a weekend to cover every game. So before the weekend starts, I basically have to pick the games I'm going to do like the match reports on. And I just sat there watching this Wales-Georgia match, having no notes, nothing going on, and just sat there absolutely gobsmacked at what I was watching. So Wales dropped down from that magnificent win for Georgia. Uh, Wales going down now 79 0.26. Now, this might be the lowest I've ever seen Wales. Um, for those of you who've been following the channel for a long time, I also really enjoy playing the rugby video games. Um, and in that, the ranking or the rating of the teams in that game is based directly off of these rankings. Now, I think I've always seen Wales in the 80s in those video games. And with the World Cup coming up next year, I don't know if there'll be a new rugby video game. Uh, but we'll see if we manage to get Wales back up into the 80s rather than in the 70s mark here, because they're not that far behind uh, Japan now. Japan not managing to beat France. France looked pretty uh, secure there in, in that game. But Japan Japan aren't that far behind. Extending it out then further down the table, there's a couple of different things moving around here. Now, uh, Italy, of course, did lose that game to uh, South Africa, but Samoa managing to win there sees them climb up to that 11th spot. Georgia, with that win, sees them overtake Fiji, moving into 13th, 75.9. Now, they're only you know, four points away from Wales now. They're in the pool together and Fiji are. They're all in this one big pool in the World Cup. Going to be really excited to see how Wales managed to bounce back from that loss. Um, other games went on the weekend. Spain won theirs. They go up above Uruguay. Uruguay moved down into 17th. Namibia up from 23 up to 21. Canada going the exact opposite way from 21 down to 23. Uh, anything else going on in terms of the, uh, the sort of tier 2, tier 3? Doesn't look like a lot um, going on there. There were some fun games on the weekend, which of course we didn't uh, cover on the channel, um, including the likes of Portugal, which I don't think I've mentioned yet. Portugal have got themselves into the World Cup. Um, I believe they drew, I think it was, against the USA, but they get in on points difference. So Portugal are into the World Cup. So I'm going to have to learn some Portuguese rugby player names because, to be honest, I don't know any. <laughs> so when the World Cup comes around, I'm going to have a field day trying to learn a bit more about them. So overall, no, uh, no big movers in the top five then, but it's that six to, well... 6 to 14 spot where we're really seeing a lot of people move around a couple of those some really unexpected results that happened on the weekend so let me know what you guys think of the rankings on to the community polls then uh, this is what i've really started enjoying doing over this autumn series just to get your guys's input on this so before the weekend started i put a little poll see what you guys thought was going to be the best game of the weekend which one were you most excited about england new zealand winning by a mile to be fair 57 percent of all votes going for that one um ireland australia was one probably you know Big two teams going up against each other. How are they going to be able to handle each other? That one was quite a low-scoring game, but a real sort of gritty game. Uh, and then coming in third was Italy-South Africa. Now, one, not a lot of people excited for, Wales-Georgia mainly because I, I guess they expected Wales to sort of win that game. I did put a little thing out just to congratulate Georgia. For those of you who don't know, I am actually a, a Wales supporter. I try and remain as unbiased as I can uh, on the channel, but I did just sit back and enjoyed watching Georgia just put everything into that game. So I had to do a little thing because I knew I wasn't going to be doing a match report. So that was 
about uh, Georgia beating Wales. But in terms of the uh, the results post game, quite surprising. So England, New Zealand, absolutely still there as our side favourites because you know there was a big game on the weekend and a draw. Quite surprisingly, uh, Italy, South Africa moves them into second. Not that many people thrilled by the uh, the Ireland Australia one. I don't think it was the most exciting game in the world. I think you've got to really enjoy rugby to get a lot of that one. Now, one of the big movers there, though, Wales-Georgia on the increase there. See how that moved up. What was it before? 2% of people picked Wales-Georgia before the weekend. 16% of people picked it by the end. So many people were really happy from that. I have actually seen loads of comments from people from Georgia, and we've got, like, Georgian subscribers. Great. I love that the channel's expanding. We've got a bigger community uh, to include teams like that, and people are getting involved with rugby, because I really hope Georgia are able to move it. We did see that interview with Shara Kadze um, after the after the game was over, and he was so passionate about wanting world rugby to take Georgian rugby seriously. We already heard about teams wanting to have teams knocked out of the Six Nations, have Georgia replace. Um, not many people voting for that in Wales anymore because currently we've lost to Italy and Georgia this year. <laughs> get rid of that concept immediately before we get uh, too far into it. But congratulations to Georgia. We've got some exciting rugby all over the weekend. It's quite nice to see that these are quite evened out, but England, New Zealand still ahead of the rest. On to the Super Brew then, where, as you can see, uh, by my choices that I've got over here, uh, a lot more red. I did say I was going to have to have a good week. It's not this week. <laughs> a lot of big results. Some people doing extremely well. There's a lot of yellow points there. A lot of people getting those bonus points and the margins and stuff. Uh, I'm not one of them. I'm down here. <laughs> I did not have a good week, this one. So, starting out, Tonga versus Uruguay. Most people thought a, a Tonga win. It was Tonga by 24. I went for 16. Just outside that bracket of where you needed to be. Uh, Bubbles and David Wakefield... Both there getting a little half point, but the bonus going to Bubbles on 21. What did they win by? 24 was the closest. Baggy Machine out there again on the uh, on the outside wild calls, but still probably closer than a lot of other people, to be fair. Most people backing Tonga for this one. Yep, two people went for Uruguay, Pierre and T. Davis. Um, maybe thought they were going to have a big comeback there, but it looks like it was a bit of a blowout game. Haven't seen any highlights or anything from that one. Might want to uh, check that out. Italy versus South Africa by 42. That's a lot. That's an awful lot. Um, ironically, this is the one where I thought Bagging Machine would be going <laughs> really high for, uh, for South Africa. Went the opposite way. Went for Italy. Connor does rugby. Wanted to uh, mix it up again and go for that Italy win for a second time in a row. Steal some of those points. Most of the group going for South Africa. Roach, though, goes the furthest out. Gets that bonus point. 28, what did I say it was in the end? 42. So quite far away. But uh, yeah, well done to Roach getting the, uh, the outside bonus point there. Wales versus Georgia. Now, here is an interesting result. Uh, as you can see by the group here, 1% of the world, 1% thought Georgia were going to win this game. Most people thought it would be quite a comfortable Wales win. You know, I was there in my Wales by 19. I was sort of slap bang in the middle of stuff. A lot of people going outside. Sam Booker, 40, 45. Wow, that's uh, going the uh, the outrageous one. But one person in the group did get it correct. Bagging machine went for Georgia by 14. Still quite a mad like score to go for 14 there. But the only person to pick Georgia in the 1% of the world. So you got yourself the win point and the, uh, the bonus point for that one. And no one else scored anything in the entire group. So well done to Baggy Machine on that pick. A real good one there. Romania versus Samoa. Uh, yeah, I thought this one was going to be a bit closer than it ended up being. Uh, Alex and Lord Nicholas went for Romania on this one. The majority going for Samoa. Samoa got the win over Georgia last week, who've now beaten Wales. So I don't know if that technically means... Wales are less than Samoa as well. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, going outside, you wanted to be at the top end again. Dave Wakefield, we said his name already. We'll say it again. Half bonus point and the full bonus point for getting it within 20. And they won by 22. So pretty bang on, to be fair there. Um, Scotland, Argentina. This was a bigger score than I expected it to be as well. Now, I tried to play tactically for this one. I thought most people would back Scotland. It didn't go that way. It was relatively 50-50, maybe 55-45. I thought most people would back Scotland. I picked Argentina thinking most people wouldn't pick Argentina. A lot of people joined me there. Bagging machine out there on the 30 points um, again. But you wanted to be Scotland, you know, by 23. I don't think a lot of people saw that game going the way it did with so many cards going on. Uh, but well done to these guys getting up the top. Bonus points shared by Rugby15 and Connor does rugby showing that uh, that Scotland support, but it looks like almost no one got the actual margin. If you see, I'm here compared to where the green marker is, that 56, that's where you want it to be. I don't think a lot of people uh, were getting up there for those sorts of scores. 
England versus New Zealand. Uh, this was quite heavy New Zealand win, to be fair. 82%, you know, I thought maybe it would be a bit closer than that. A lot of the uh, the group also going for New Zealand. Um, quite widespread again, 37 down to three points. Um, a lot of people here getting the half point, not me, because I would thought that New Zealand would win by an amount. Even if it was one point, I went for six playing tactically thinking I'll at least get the half bonus point. No, a draw. So I don't get anything from that game either, but it was split between a whole bunch of you uh, all getting there. So to be fair, Dave, again, very close, probably the closest there. I'm surprised you don't really get the bonus point for that. You're still technically the closest on a draw. I think maybe you should have got a bonus point there. Ireland versus Australia. A 93% for Ireland. A lot of people expecting to go that way. The bookies had this one at like Ireland to win by like 23, which I thought was was wildly outside. It ended up being three. Um, Really, really tight game. So you wanted to be down here. Uh, Top-notch rugby, Alex, All Blacks Forever and Betterav are the two they're going to be sharing the uh, the actual bonus point themselves, but four people getting themselves inside that little marker. Rugby fifteen, the only one to go for the uh, the Australia pick there would have been some big points going your way had that been the result. And then finally, France versus Japan. Uh, I said France by twenty. France got eighteen. I imagine a lot of us got that. Oh, in fact, everyone went for France in this one. Um, and a considerable number of us got us that half bonus point, so we ended up not making that much of a difference. One person, of course, did get the actual bonus point. Goes to Pierre, uh, getting it in there. That's a great name for a, for a France win, to be fair. So, you know, you know your French rugby, probably. That's the way to go. Uh, so what would, what did they win by in the end? 18. 18, you picked 19. So pretty bang on, to be fair. Me and Sambuca both had uh, 20, so we weren't that far off either. Um, so, in terms of the rounds, the overall round, then we see, we said his name a couple of times today, Dave Wakefield going up there on top, 8.5, followed very closely by All Blacks Forever and Bubbles. Bubbles has just been at the top, like, every week so far. I just see that name constantly in, like, the top three every week. Uh, Better have coming up on 7.5, three people sharing 6.5. A bunch of us uh, on six. <laughs> oh, of us, I say as if I'm one of them. No, I'm not. I'm on 5.5. I thought I at least scraped in there. Nope, I'm down there on 5.5 alongside Lord Nicholas and uh, Rugby 15. ALF on five. T Davis on 4.5. WRU 14 on one. Uh, I'm not sure whether you just got them all wrong or you maybe just picked one game and didn't have time to do the others uh, and some other people not getting in there. And down the bottom, Dan can't ruck as well. And finally... In terms of the leaderboards, let's see how it's all shifted up. We can see that out in front is Bubbles. We've said the name multiple times. 29.83. 29. Get into the big scores. Bowie and Oscar coming in quite closely to fair. About two points away there. Two and a half points away there. It's beginning to feel like it might be too much. We've only got like the two main games. I'm not sure if there's any tier two games going on next week, uh, but I think there's only two games. So Bubbles needs to pick real wrong, <laughs> I think, in order for a comeback here. All Backs Forever raises by three places up, up to fourth, um, sharing that spot now with Connor Does Rugby on that 27.33, winning based on the, uh, the, the TDM, which is like how many points you actually were away. So that separates you out into that fourth and fifth position. Moving down the field, Pierre holds out in six. ALF drops down two places into seventh. Betterav and Dave both up into eighth and ninth. Top notch, me and Lord Nicholas all dropping. I've I've gone out of the top ten now from, from having a relatively good first week. It's it's slowly gone downhill. Roach holding out well in thirteenth. Sambuca climbs a couple of positions. Alex and Bagging Machine coming up strong with those those big picks from Bagging Machine. Um, and then a couple of other people dropping down the bottom here, all the way down to Irish Dude, who was in the comment section on a couple of videos. I'm not sure whether whether it just all went terribly wrong, and he just said, I'll, I'll wash my hands this one now. Uh, with only five, I'm going to guess you, uh, you stopped doing some picks uh, for that one. But congratulations to Dave on winning the round. Congratulations to Bubbles on holding out the, uh, the victory up to now. In terms of the games coming up next week then, uh, no, there is just two. It is just two. Wales versus Australia, a Wales team that just lost to Georgia and an Australia team who nearly managed to beat the world number ones. I wonder who people are going to pick for that one. Uh, and then England, South Africa. That one could actually be a tasty game. I'm looking forward to that one. South Africa off the back of a, of a good win. England managing to somehow climb back a draw against New Zealand. That that could be a fun game. That might be the one to, uh, to watch. But of course, guys, we'll be doing the preview videos later in the week for both of these games and then probably be able to get match reports done for both the games annoyingly one is on straight after the other which means i have to 
try and work out how I'm going to do the videos. But if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel just to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. If you've enjoyed this World Rugby Rankings video today, along with some of the Super Rue results, remember to leave the video a like because it really does help the channel out. And I hope you've all enjoyed this one today, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.